Well, we've been hearing a lot of strange rumors in the last couple of weeks, and this might be the thing that's kind of behind it all. OpenAI's super agent. We've covered the Mark Zuckerberg interview on Joe Rogan, where amongst other things, he mentions that they won't be needing the mid-level software engineers anymore. They will be replaced by AI. By the way, since then, it looks like they're cutting 5% of their staff. According to a company-wide memo obtained by Bloomberg, the Facebook owner is cutting around 5% of its staff. And interestingly, the directive is already in tension with what Zuckerberg told podcaster Joe Rogan last week about how the company was looking to replace mid-level engineers with AI. So it looks like this is aimed at low performers, but we'll see if those people get replaced or if AI will sort of pick up the slack. We also covered OpenAI's economic blueprint that lays out kind of like the way forward for US to maintain its sort of dominance in AI. Sweeping changes across exports, national security, even education. And they did mention that Sam Altman will be going to Washington DC on January 30th to preview the state of AI advancement and how it can drive economic growth. Part of this meeting will probably be trying to install or agree on some portions of this blueprint. And that's where this article comes in. So it's axios.com behind the curtain coming soon PhD level super agents. Looks like some of the stuff that is going to be discussed, that's going to be presented, some of it might have been leaked to the public. Architects of the leading generative AI model are abuzz that a top company, possibly OpenAI, in the coming weeks will announce a next level breakthrough that unleashes PhD level super agents to do complex human tasks probably open AI that's going to be announcing this. So Sam Altman will be meeting with the U.S. government behind a closed doors briefing on January 30th. So Zuckerberg is saying in 2025, they're not going to need those mid-level software engineers. And since then, we've also had those layoffs or at least an internal memo about the upcoming layoffs. They're saying that our sources in the U.S. government and leading AI companies tell us that in recent months, the leading companies have been exceeding projections in AI advancement this hasn't been really that much of a secret. You know, everybody has their sources, but everything's on, on Twitter. We've been seeing these leading labs, specifically Logan Kilpatrick at Google, who is ex-OpenAI, a number, uh, Jason Way at OpenAI, like a number of people that were, I mean, I guess you can say they're being, being a little bit vague, or at least they're not coming out and saying what the breakthroughs were exactly, which is understandable. There's non-disclosure agreements, et cetera. But you can tell they're giddy with excitement. The tone of the conversation changed. If you've been watching this channel, you know why I believe that's happening and how the sort of the reasoner models kind of kicked off this kind of recursive self-improvement. That's at least kind of the best theory about what we're seeing and we have a lot of support for it. But the point is something's coming down the line, whether that's a GPT-5 or whatever they're going to call the next reasoning model, like they went from 01 to 03, so what, 05, 07, who knows? And we're also seeing a lot of big companies either not hire anymore for certain positions or start laying people off. We've talked about this. Salesforce will hire no more software engineers in 2025, says Mark Benioff. They're saying there's going to be a 30% productivity boost from AI. We're not adding any more software engineers next year because we have increased the productivity this year with agent force and other AI technology that we're using for engineering teams by more than 30% to the point where our engineering velocity is incredible. I can't believe what we're achieving in engineering. And then we also have less support engineers next year because we have an agentic layer. We'll have more salespeople next year because we really need to explain to people exactly the value that we can achieve with AI. So they're adding more salespeople, but less support, less engineers. Now you still see a lot of people online that are saying that AI will never replace software engineers, that it's all basically a hype cycle. And on the other side of the equation, we have a lot of people, these CEOs and tech leaders that are basically betting, it seems betting big on the fact that AI will in fact be able to replace some percentage of these jobs, or if not replace, at least enable the, you know, the top 50% or whatever to do much, much more work. So there's not as many people needed. At this point, I think it's safe to say that we're going to see some impact and uh, we don't know exactly how much, but I think in 2025, it's going to start unfolding and we'll kind of see where the truth lies. And like I've said, we've seen a lot of people, insiders at OpenAI, Google, et cetera, Anthropic talking about something big coming. And some of those are, of course, kind of like explained away as hype. They're trying to build up hype. 
even though, I don't know, do researchers in general, are they the hype guys? I, I feel like no. But there's another person that's giving a chilling, catastrophic warning. So Jake Sullivan with three days left as White House National Security Advisor with wide access to the world's secrets, called us to deliver a chilling, catastrophic warning for America and the incoming administration. So again, this is still Axios.com. I'll link these two articles below because they're they really seem to be uh, on point here. And they're saying the next few years will determine whether artificial intelligence leads to catastrophe and whether China or America prevails in the AI arms race. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the OpenAI's economic blueprint is kind of centered around America winning this race. And they continue here, staying ahead in the AI arms race makes the Manhattan Project during World War II seem tiny and conventional national security debates small. We've, of course, talked about this before. Papers like the Situational Awareness have described exactly why this will be kind of brought into the fold of a national security. This will be a Manhattan Project style development with the corporation of the U.S. government and, you know, other governments across the world kind of building their own version of it. The Manhattan Project was, of course, the development of the nuclear bomb. So no sort of a national security apparatus will sit by and let some Bay Area startup create super intelligence. Neither will the governments of China, etc. And this national security advisor, he continues, this is beyond uncharted waters. It's an unexplored galaxy, a new frontier, in his words. And one, he warns, where progress routinely exceeds projections and advancement. Progress is now pulsing in months, not years. So this is the person, Jake Sullivan, the U.S. National Security Advisor since 2021. He was the senior advisor to the U.S. federal government at the Iran nuclear negotiations. He's also a visiting professor at Yale Law School. The reason I bring this up is since I started this channel, I've always had some small portion of the people that don't believe in any of this. They say AI is useless. It's not going anywhere. This is just part of the hype cycle. And granted, over the last few years, that percentage of people has been shrinking rather rapidly. I'm curious if people like this saying the same thing that I've been saying, if that changes your mind at all. Is he also doing it for the clickbait? For those of you who still think that AI is going to amount to nothing, let me know in the comments. Does this kind of maybe change your mind a little bit? Does this maybe cast some doubt on your beliefs and you might be willing to accept that, hey, this might be kind of a big deal? Sullivan spoke with an urgency and directness that we rarely heard during his decade plus in public life. Somehow, government will have to join forces with these companies, right? So these tech companies that some of them have the wealth, the capital, the resources of nation states. They have to join forces with these companies to nurture and protect America's early AI edge and shape the global rules for using potentially godlike powers, he says. I don't yet know what the title of this video is going to be, but it's going to have the words godlike powers in it. And one last note on Mr. Sullivan, uh, he says he's personally, he's not an AI doomer. This is very important because there are some people who believe that there's nothing good that will come out of it, that it's only sort of danger and catastrophe ahead. Again, if you've been following this channel, you know the massive, massive, massive potential this technology has to improve all aspects of uh, human life. And of course, it comes with great risks as well. And as he says, we have to be clear eyed and real about those risks. On this channel, we sometimes kind of poke fun at the AI safety people, not because we're dismissing the risks of AI, but rather because it's important that the people that are in charge during, during this crucial window are, you know, somebody more like Mr. Sullivan. They're not AI doomers thinking that there's a 99.99 .99 chance of extinction nor the people that are kind of unconcerned with the risks and full steam ahead. They can't be people that are financially incentivized to push this out the door. And I mean, I don't know too much about this person, but just based on reading this, it seems like he's got a pretty neutral kind of view on it, a pretty accurate view on it. He's like, there's could be great things ahead. There could be risks ahead. We have to be clear eyed. We have to also understand that we're not the only ones pursuing this technology. We have to sort of keep ahead of the race. And as he continues, there's no person kind of in governance with whom he talked that doesn't share Sullivan's broad belief in the stakes ahead. And regardless of what was said in public, every background conversation we had with President Biden's high command came back to China. Yes, they had concerns about the ethics, misinformation, and job loss of AI. They, they talked about that. They discussed it, right? But that's not, and that's what's in the news. That's what people talk about. 
But that's not the number one big thing. Every move, every risk was calculated to keep China from beating us to the AI punch. Nothing else matters, they basically said. Now, Mark Andreessen, somebody that did very well in the kind of like the internet revolution, uh, does a lot of tech investing. He's part of the main, one of the main guys of A16Z. He also talks really, really fast. So if you have the playback speed and you listen to an interview of his and you have the playback speed at more than the default setting, you're not going to make any sense of it. But he sort of was quoted as saying that the Biden administration would have been absolutely horrifying and he feared that the officials might strangle AI startups if left in power. So in other words, Biden would assert government control by keeping AI in power in the hands of a few big players, players that they, that they could control. The Trump administration does seem to be full speed ahead on AI development. And it seems like they're going to be working with the tech CEOs at a very personal level. We, of course, have Elon Musk. At the inauguration, there'll be Jeff Bezos, Tim Cook, Sam Altman, Sundar Pichai, Mark Zuckerberg. But let's get back to our main story, this idea of super agents. So this is what apparently Sam Altman is going to DC to present, to talk about on the 30th. We're talking about super agents, AI tools designed to tackle messy, multi-layered, real-world problems that human minds struggle to organize and conquer. They won't respond to just a single command, they will pursue a goal. Super agents synthesize massive amounts of information, analyze options, and deliver products. Right? Imagine telling your agent to build me a new payment software. The agent would design, test, deliver a functioning product. You could go through massive, massive amounts of data, compile various insights faster, mastering logistics, whether that's a supply chain or just some sort of an offsite team building exercise. But with all that said, what do you think? Are you concerned over any potential sort of nation conflict over the development of superintelligence? Are you worried about these super agents hitting the workforce and really displacing a lot of people? Are we ready for that? Do we have some safety nets in place? Do we have any plan Bs in case stuff goes bad? I personally try to stay out of politics on this channel, but feel free to tell me in the comments if during this time of AGI emerging, would you feel more confident with somebody like Trump or somebody like Biden? Which approach to this would you prefer? How do you feel about the fact that the US government and these massive tech companies, massive and not so massive, I mean, OpenAI isn't certainly massive, it's not the size of Meta or Google, etc. But the fact that they're so close together, the US government and these tech companies, like, does that concern you at all? If you're not aware, TikTok is out. It's out of the United States. There are more and more uh, restriction controls on what we can ship over to China. In terms of these AI chips, uh, U.S. technology that's AI related, back in June 2024, Leopold Aschebrenner published Situational Awareness the decade ahead, where he kind of broke down how this whole thing is going to go. The shift from AGI to superintelligence, the intelligence explosion, the Manhattan Project for superintelligence, how national security for places like the U.S., China, etc., how that's going to play out. At the time, I said that I believe that he is right on the money. I believed he would be correct about every single one of those things. So far, I feel like we can agree that he's been eerily correct about a lot of the stuff that we're seeing. You can call him Ashenbrenner or Nostradamus. Both are very difficult to pronounce. But one of the big points of the paper was this idea of a rapidly approaching intelligence explosion, the point at which AI research will be done much more effectively by AI. And this is why the timelines are shrinking so rapidly, not only in terms of how fast that this is going to hit us, but also if you're one of the many sort of uh, rulers, people in power around the world, and you think you have some role to play in this. This is not one of those things where you can kind of wait and see what happens because things will be happening very, very fast. They will be compounding. So falling a year behind in research would be like losing a decade back in, you know, the Manhattan Project days. It's weird to think about how much of this stuff is coming out of, you know, San Francisco and the Bay Area. I've lived there for a brief portion of my life, and that's a weird city, man. And the whole area has got a certain surreal energy to it. But my point here is, uh, no matter what happens in the next few years, things are going to be wild. And I could be wrong now, but I don't think so. If you made it this far, my name is Wes Roth. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.